Ethan Slater has made a spectacular Broadway debut as the title hero of SpongeBob SquarePants, a role that has earned him two Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards and a 2018 Tony Award nomination for Best Leading Actor in a Musical. Find out all about the charming Triple Threat's fantasy SpongeBob summer camp, how he bounced showbiz and singlets in high school, and how the early loss of his mom made him the man he is today on this week's Show People. Mr. Slater, Tony nominee, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Two-time Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winner. Congratulations. I'm, thank you. I'm the still fans pinching like myself. You. The fans are amazing. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I love the fans. Isn't it cool that, like, you have fans now? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't often think about it like that. It's really cool that the show has fans yeah, now. Yeah, but you have fans, and, like, a year ago, so, you didn't. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you had some. I'm sure true. you had friends and family. I'm, my don't, don't get me wrong. My bubby's a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, there's, like, Ethan Slater fans. Yeah, that's, it's really wild. And yeah. they're, like, awesome people. Are like, they? Yeah, truly. What are they like? Tell me about your fans. <laughs> um, I will say that there, there's a couple of people who tweet at me in the morning and say, like, I hope you're having a good day. Oh, I'm, that's I'm nice. No, and it's, like, I'm not so great with Twitter and social media. I am right. working on it. It's hard. It's hard. It's a lot of work. Um, and so often I see something and I don't acknowledge it. But um, I've got to say, if you're watching this, I see it. He and saw it. He's and it's it. like, and it, and sometimes I'm not, I don't wake up super happy and it makes me happier. I will say like one of my, one of my favorite like pieces of fan mail was a gift that I got. Okay. And it was a jar filled with handwritten, just like nice thoughts. Just, just nice, nice thoughts. Just nice thoughts. Just like, hey, if you're ever like feeling bored or feeling wow. down, just like open this jar, pull out a thing. And it says like, you know, I don't know, some fact about ducks. Wow. Yeah, it's like, it's okay. really, it's like this really sweet. You still have the jar? Yeah. And okay. I still pull out random ones. And there's so many. Handwritten little notes in there. Wow. I'm getting new ones all the time. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, the fans are for real. Yeah, some like really special people with like really like thoughtful talents. Yeah. You know who yeah. else are fans? Tony nominators. This show, what? 12 Tony nominations. Yeah. Very excited. I fell in love with this show in previews. I've never seen SpongeBob. I didn't uh, smoke marijuana in college. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've heard some people that might be, that, that's one way in to the show, but there's a lot of ways into the show. No comment. You know, kids love it. There's, it's a lot of different audiences. Yeah. Um, but uh, I didn't know what I was walking into, and I was um, delightfully surprised. I was shocked at how I much that. I loved you're it. Our, you're our favorite Mark. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. I remember when you saw it the first time, because you came back and we got to say hi afterwards. And Yeah, I don't lie after no. a show. I, I, really, I really loved it. That's awesome. But now everybody loves it. Yeah. Like, you, like, and this was a show, if we can put this in context. Yeah. When they first announced it, I feel like there were a lot of eye rolls. And for then sure. you guys did the show out in Chicago, yeah. right? And then it took a long time for it to actually find a theater and get whatever it, it needed. I don't know if it needed money or reworking it or whatever it happened. But there was yeah. like, I remember thinking like, is that SpongeBob musical ever going to come? And I'm sure you thought that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was not holding my breath about it. But the, th the thing that's sort of crazy about that is like, it was really successful in Chicago. Yeah. We, we had a great run. We were received really well. We had amazing fans in Chicago who uh -huh. loved the show. OG, um, yeah. SpongeBob fans True. Out, out in who, Chicago. Who, like, who are, like, are coming back to Broadway. Like, okay. it's, it's awesome. Yeah, uh -huh. I can understand why you would hear, oh, SpongeBob SquarePants on Broadway and immediately go like, oh. Right. But fortunately, like Nickelodeon approached it really right. And right. Um, I, I don't know how often that happens where they really led with the you know creativity first mm -hmm. and they were like we're not going to do this unless it's worthwhile to do it and then tina landau came in and who's a creative who's, goddess she's she really is like yeah. her her brain is unlike any other yeah and her fashion sense and she her seems fashion like fashion sense is incredible she seems like she's really tight with the cast like yeah. do you hear from her often is she around yeah she, she sees the show a lot yeah she's one of those directors who you feel like will catch you no matter how how high you fall from you know mm -hmm. like she, she's like really um, earns the trust of the people in the cast and and you know casts get really close and really tight and become like families or mm -hmm. at least in my experience our cast is really very tight and she's a really big part of that yeah um, I don't know if directors often are I haven't right. done another Broadway show before yeah um, but she really is an integral part of that little community I don't actually know the answer to this. Do you yeah. need to lean on a director months into a run? Do you, uh, do you find yourself like needing to talk to her about things or? The, you know, um, off and on, yeah. There are these little things that change uh -huh. over the course of a run. Right. Um, it can be as much, you know, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example of a line. I, I, was, I was saying this line and the last word of it was Sandy. 
uh -huh. and I was just like, you know, addressing it to Sandy. And when I started, in my mind, there was like this little beat before I said her name, mm -hmm. and it was totally natural, and it felt really normal. And she came in a couple weeks ago, and she was like, hey, then you know you're saying that line really weird? And I was like, I don't think so, Tina. I think I'm saying it totally normally. Tony nominated She's like, performance. I was like, uh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> what you, you haven't, you know, you, you've been out of town. She was like, just say the line right now. And I was like, this is your home, Sandy. <laughs> I was like, oh, now I hear it. Now I hear it. It's very weird. That was a weird pause. That was creepy. Uh, she was like, yeah, there's like this little thing where it like, you know, you, you just get into the you rhythm. Just, you do it you every just get night. into the rhythm right. of it and you think it's natural. Mm -hmm. But having a director's outside eyes to sort of to keep you in check is, uh -huh. is really helpful mm -hmm. six months in. Right. So she she can tell you when you're doing creepy things. Yeah, on she's stage. like she's like you know that you think that sounds really endearing. It sounds really creepy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that's not too common. That was the only place I think. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has talked about the physicality of this performance because it's really unlike anything else. I mean, it's almost hard to properly analyze it because there's so many different skills involved. I mean, yeah. you're a fantastic singer and actor and dancer, but then you're also an acrobat, and I know you're like a high school wrestler, and, and I know you think you took Taekwondo at one point in your I life. I did, yeah. All these like things, and I'm sure it was sort of like the culmination of like, oh my God, my whole life led up to this. Is it a lot physically, or is it is that just like you're into the rhythm of it? It's a little bit of both. I mean, it uh -huh. is a lot physically. It's like, t it's, it's something that needs maintenance and, uh -huh. and is definitely difficult for anyone, I think. There were a lot of skills that I had to learn for this. Like, yeah, I was a wrestler, but I couldn't really do a backflip, even okay. though I used to try in wrestling. And with the help of my castmates, you know, sort of figured out how to do that. And now I get to do it every night. Yeah. I feel a lot of ownership over every move I do in the mm -hmm. show. Yeah. Because it is, it is this weird, like, slumdog millionaire thing where it's like, <laughs> you know, like, you look at each, like, little moment in the show and you like, can go back to when I was six years old and I was, you know, starting to take Taekwondo. And it's uh -huh. like, oh, yeah, that was, like, a big part of my life for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I do the splits in the show and you go back to when I was a high school wrestler and it's like, oh, yeah, he r realized at that point that he had to do the splits to get out of this one move. And right. You were, like, a really good high school wrestler. And I know this because there's a YouTube uh, user named Ethan Slater. <sighs> who has uploaded a bunch of wrestling videos. Like I have tried every password that I can remember to get, to get back into that account. Because you can't figure out how to get I rid of them? I cannot figure out how to get rid of those <laughs> videos. Not that I really want to, but... Uh, well, they're very impressive. But it's funny that you were like archiving your wrestling career. Yeah, I thought I was going to be um, a college wrestler. I thought I was going to... Uh, that was my path. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, and so my, my sophomore, junior year of high school, I started taking these videos and uploading them. Um, in order to send to recruiters. Um, oh, really? That was that was so that's the what goal. the channel was for. Yeah, it went okay. Uh, <laughs> but my senior year, while I was doing that, I was also realizing that I wanted to pursue theater uh -huh. uh, as as more than an extracurricular. Yeah. So most <laughs> most aspiring performers start like YouTube channels of like them singing songs from yeah. like Sondheim or whatever. But you have wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling. Yeah. Ethan Which Slater in singlets on YouTube forever. That's true. Uh, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back <laughs> with more Ethan Slater. <laughs> We are back with 2018 Tony nominee, Ethan Slater. Are you used to oh. hearing people saying that? Do people now announce you that way? Yeah, I make sure that all my family members announce me that way whenever cool. we talk on the phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it still feels very weird to hear. Yeah. I, you know, now that this is an established Broadway musical hit with 12 Tony nominations, we're going to be hearing about productions of this show forever now. So I'm thinking about, like, they're really going to have to find a lot of guys that can do this role. So I feel like maybe there should be, like, a camp. I, I really think there should be a like camp. a SpongeBob. So what would happen at a SpongeBob camp? I mean, there was like a Tracy Turnblad camp, I think. So yeah. that doesn't seem as hard as this. Is there like a Mormon camp for the is that, Book is of that Mormon or just so. Mormons? I think Mormons do oh, just go to camp. Mormons. Yeah, just for Mormons. Yeah. Just, to <laughs> just yeah, get I ready Mormons to go, to go on their missions. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like so, I went to Jewish summer camp. There's a Mormon yeah, yeah, you, camp. and you have a camping summer. history. Yes. No, I think a SpongeBob camp is a great idea. Yeah. So what would happen there? Certainly, there would be aerobic training. Yes, of course. Singing while running. Singing while on a trampoline. Oh. Singing while doing splits. Oh, right. Um, uh, yeah. But no, I, th I actually think I think there would be like contortion training. Just the things that I trained on was yeah. like contortion, dance, uh, the voice, mm -hmm. and like taking the voice and making it your own. Uh huh. Because that I think at the end of the day is one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. It'd be funny if they find like a whole like block of kids that look like you. I've had that nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> what does There's that like mean? a flock of kids who look like me who are like, 
doing the SpongeBob laugh surrounded yeah. in a circle, yeah. like around a campfire. That's the other thing that there will be at SpongeBob camp is like s'mores and okay. a campfire songs. Social, like, like a social time. S'mores, yeah. okay. Yeah. S'mores are important. Yeah, and like songbooks and okay. you know, things like that. Cool. Fun I'm camp in, stuff. I'm into it. And I also like the idea of maybe you going to like, I can't wait to see community theaters take on this show. Because I feel like Tina has created something where you can just be creative and maybe yeah. they'll add their own sort of yes. ideas of the visuals behind totally. this. My um, dad had the funniest accidental uh, shady compliment, <laughs> which is I love accidental shady was, compliments. He like he meant it so sincerely, and and it was like we did a Good Morning America um, yes. uh, number where we uh -huh. sang Bikini Bottom Day, and it went really well. And they were wonderful at Good Morning America, uh -huh. and, and and I'm really proud of how that went. And he called me and he's like, it was fantastic, Ethan. And you know, it was this awesome glimpse 20 years into the future when you're doing SpongeBob in dinner theater. Because there's people at tables in the middle of your... I was like, Dad, that is, that is such a hilarious... Because for Dad, that may be Yeah, it was like great. 20 years that's in the that's future, a Ethan, you're going to be playing SpongeBob that's a career. Yeah, you could, all over yeah, the country yeah, sure. while serving <laughs> meals. Um, I was picturing you more like going to community theaters and maybe like helping the kid out, like an hour, like you can offer like an hour, like an hour with Ethan Slater. Yeah. Like I'm just gonna give you like sort of the ropes. Oh my, that would be amazing. That'd I like, cool. I want high schools to do it. Yeah. Like I, th oh, yeah, I feel it's like gonna that be amazing. would be, it's a show filled with fun roles for people to tackle. Yeah. Like from yeah. Squidward and SpongeBob and you know, Mr. Krabs and yep. Pearl, but yep. every single one of those ensemble tracks is filled with the opportunity to be creative mm -hmm. and imaginative and you have to be really skilled to do every one of those tracks. I mm -hmm. mean, the, the, it, it is unbelievable how talented our ensemble is. Yeah, I know. Like tap dancing, skateboarding, roller skating, but also just like they're all comedian, like they're all funny. And they're all a, a unique people. That's what I loved yes. about it. They all look different and they're all like, their, their personality, like that's what I love about the, the whole production, yeah. the whole vision of the show. Yeah, it's like really an ensemble. I think it is more of an ensemble piece than people realize yeah. maybe. So is it weird for you to be singled out as like the guy, the guy getting nominated for things? Does that feel weird in any way? It, Since it you is a little. Love your cast so much. I mean, it is a little weird. Like, I, I mean, I'd be, I'd be lying if I didn't say like the nominations are really nice. Yeah, like, aren't of course. really nice. Like, the, it's and amazing. the awards. And you also won an Outer Critics Circle award. Let's yeah. not forget the and actual. The and the Broadway.com audience. Choice Thank you, Broadway.com audience. Two. Choice. I, I mean, it, it feels really special and yeah. amazing, but it would be so disingenuous to say that I did it without these people because yeah. it, it is um, impossible to take one piece out of this puzzle and for it to still work, mm -hmm. no matter what that piece is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think if you're somebody who's seen the show more than once, I think it becomes more and more apparent. Mm. But it's like, we built this thing and the swings are, like, you cannot fathom how talented our swings are because they cover all of these different unique tracks. Right. Um, Where's the Tony for swings? True. People seriously. People want Tonys for everything. What this best swing? I know. Best swing. Best ensemble. It's like it's like. I know there are a lot of different. Yeah. Well, but Broadway, but, yeah. but really, I mean, National Swing Day can't come again too soon. I I feel really lifted up by them. What was the first um, acting ensemble you were ever a part of? Like as a kid. So I I did these like these community children theater productions. Okay. And I, I'm sure I did more, but I only remember two. Okay. Um, the first one, I was four years old. Wow. Um, it was The Wizard of Oz. Oh, I think you were Toto. I think I was Toto. I think I told you last time I was here, maybe. <laughs> I, um, I've heard of your Toto. Yeah. It's legendary. Uh, it was, oh, uh, it was What did Toto really wear? Special. Did, did uh, you wear something? Or? I just wore like a black t-shirt and black shorts. Sure. Yeah. Um, it was like, the, like the like the SpongeBob, like exactly. you don't have to look exactly, exactly like a sponge. You don't have to look like a it dog. It implied you... the DNA of a dog, and I think I had some face paint on. And my sister was Dorothy. Right. She didn't carry you. I don't think she okay. did. Good. I don't think she did. That'd be awkward. But like she probably could have. She could have. Yeah. Right? <laughs> she was. And a as 10. a legend knows you, what happened? I uh, I had one responsibility. Right. Um, other than the occasional bark, which was to pull the curtain and reveal the wizard. That's a spoiler, by the way. Oh my, can you, can you, um, can we go back in and in post put up, like, bleep out what I said? Um, right, you had to, to reveal. Yes. And reveal. <laughs> and, uh, I think they know. <laughs> and um, I guess I tripped or something. I just, all I remember is that I pulled down the entire thing. Of course you did. Onto the wizard himself um, and uh, made the show better for and ruining was he, a was he a seasoned veteran performer that was furious at that kid that just so. yeah. knocked the curtain down on him? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think he was probably very kind about it, but he was an adult. 
which was a very big deal <laughs> and very nerve wracking. The other one that I remember being a part of was was Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, okay. And the way that it worked is there was like a, a choir um, ensemble. Okay. So we sang all the songs and we sort of sat in the back and and came alive during oh. um, during each number. Okay. Uh, so you were just there and we then were just there. You know, like one of those like really great moments where you're like really engaged in doing it and then you're still on stage but you're like <laughs> and would like, you have been doing like that? Is that what old. you have been doing? Because because the attention wasn't on you, you would have uh, been like, like uh, bored in the back. You know what? I bet I bet I still thought the attention was on me, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, like, I was a little ham. Yeah. So um, you were a little ham. A little bit, yeah. And is the physical stuff was that like a part of it too? Like I was an energy. Were you that kid? Are you that kid who's like act something out even if I don't want you to to tell me the story? <sighs> and it depends on who I was with. Okay. Yes. Yes. My family likes to recount when I was in the music band in fifth grade. Uh -huh. And in fifth grade, you have six months of rehearsal leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. So they had six months of me singing 76 trombones oh, wow. at the top of my lungs That's a lot. at all moments of the day. That's yeah. a lot. But now they know it by heart, so they're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. They um, endlessly patient with me uh -huh. as a kid. But I think I was not quite like that in school. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people have slightly different images of themselves than how others perceive them. But uh, I, I always felt a little shy and inhibited okay. in school. And it was it was in plays and in the the productions of theater that I did that I got to sort of let out that energy um, because it was like socially acceptable. Right. So it was it was like a pretty important outlet for me as a kid who was actually a little bit shy and and still is, believe it or not. I think a lot of people think they're shy. So You are um, shy. But there's you, there's you, an you, you still consider yourself sort of shy. There's a social element uh -huh. of me that's like okay. pretty reserved. Okay. But you were the kid but in high school that maybe when they saw the show they were like, that guy, that guy can do that? Like because they didn't know that that was you. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. High school, I was I like was starting to come out of my right. shell because of our theater community. Right. I mean, because of the theater kids who like, we had a great program and a, and also you know my wrestling team was very supportive. Yeah, they were I, I had it. I had a really I think unique experience, which is that my wrestling teammates came to see every play and musical I oh, was wow. in, and my theater friends came to watch me wrestle. So I had like a re really supportive communities there, huh. which I'm I'm very thankful for. Oh, look at that! You were actually you didn't have to choose like your friends. Everything no, kind was, of blended. Yeah, it wasn't as much High School Musical as it was. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. What was it like? It was just great. Yeah. Like hair. Everyone loving each other. <laughs> it was other. just like hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be back with more Ethan Slater. And we're back with Ethan Slater, currently starring in SpongeBob SquarePants. On Broadway. I love that show. On Broadway. On Broadway. And maybe in dinner theater in 20 years. <laughs> That's true. If your dad yeah. gets his way. That's true. Yeah. He'd be really <laughs> thrilled about it. <laughs> hey, it's a good gig. It is a good gig. It's a good gig anywhere. Absolutely it is. Yeah. Yeah. And some kid's going to be watching this in 20 years who's doing it in dinner theater right now. So you go get him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and remember to make the role your own. Is that, is that like your number one sort of tip for people? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just in general. Yeah, in life. In life. Make everything your Make own. Make everything your own. Yeah. But like you don't want to be doing a role if you don't feel like you have ownership over it. I shouldn't say you. I don't want to be doing a role if I don't feel like I have ownership over it in one way or another. Right. And uh, I, I think the thing that's really special about SpongeBob is that even though it feels irreplicable, yep. that's what they said about the cartoon. And then we figured out how to take mm -hmm. this cartoon and create something new that is still identifiably the show, but on stage. Right. And that was all about taking ownership over it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it's an easy task, yeah. but I think it's the most rewarding approach yeah. in, my, in my opinion. Yeah, you definitely have ownership of this role. They're gonna be, it's gonna be following you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Even though a lot of other great things are gonna happen, people are gonna be like, SpongeBob, and yeah. you, like the, 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 the pineapples and, the, and all the stuff. Yeah. And people are, people are going to wear pineapples on their socks when they interview you, even <laughs> when you're an old man. I mean, those socks are amazing. Things. Thank you. So we were talking a little bit about your growing up and sort of getting into the theater. And so this is in Maryland, right? Yeah. You grew up in Beth Bethesda. I grew up uh, in Silver Spring, Maryland. Okay, Silver Spring. Which is right near Bethesda. Okay. 
I just yeah. like that word Bethesda. I just wanted to say it. Bethesda. It's so nice. So you started doing theater, and you said your sister. You have two sisters. Yeah. And you, your sister started doing theater, right? And then yeah. you, you were the dog, and she hopefully didn't have to carry you around. I'm sorry yeah, if, I if hope you she did. Didn't. Yeah. What did your parents do? So my father uh, worked at the FDA. Okay. Yeah, the Food and Drug Administration. Government. Government. Government, government, government doctor. Yeah. My my mother passed away when I was little. She, right. She, when I was seven. I read about that. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's horrible. Wait, do you, you. do you have a lot of memories of that? Seven is young. Seven is young. Seven is really young. Um, I think my sisters have some more memories than I do. I have yeah. some, some key uh, influential memories. She had a piano in the house that she was teaching my sisters how to play. So, mm. uh, you know, that was where I first encountered music was through her and she wow. loved singing and she loved dancing. Um, even though dancing came later to me. That, that is something <laughs> right. that, I, that I think about. And you know, my, my uh, father got remarried, and I have a wonderful stepmother mm -hmm. and, and two stepbrothers, and and so we have a, a, a you know, yeah. a, a bigger family um, uh -huh. that sort of grew out of that tragedy. Brady Bunch situation. But yeah, yeah, uh -huh. but you know, the the silver linings of of each cloud. You seem like a really positive. You have a great energy about you. Ever since I first met you, you you seem like a really love life kind of guy. And I'm sure that sort of ties in with the fact that you're now playing this role and that, that feeds into why this role yeah. is so wonderful. Do you think that it's changed your path at all? The, the family going through that and, and your, your siblings and... Um, yeah. I mean, no, it's hard I'm, to I'm say, sure, I guess. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. It's the only path that I know. Right. Um, I'm sure it did. You look a lot like your mom. I saw a photo of your mom. Yeah. Yeah, you look a lot like oh. her. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. She was beautiful. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I do look a lot like her, yeah. and I think you know I'm I'm the only one of my siblings with red hair, and she had bright red hair. Mm. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, I always have felt incredibly connected for that reason. I, I will say, like, there's this thing that I was unable to process as a kid, but I spent my entire yep. childhood processing it. Right. And I was I was talking with my I'm a, I write also. Mm -hmm. That's a that's like you write a songs. Big part of my life. Is that what you mean? Or I write songs. I, I write uh, plays and I write screenplays. And, oh wow! Um, cool. And I was sharing a recent one with my sister, and and her, I hadn't really thought about this, but her comment on it was like, it's so cool to see you processing this loss that we experienced as kids mm. in so many different ways. Oh, wow. And uh, this was just like one iteration of a number of things that I've written that have had to do with death. <laughs> so, wow. so on the other end of the spectrum from SpongeBob, th this is something that has like, um, subconsciously mm -hmm. and consciously really informed my development as a person and as a writer and as an artist. Right. Yeah, and it's also not something that I talk about a lot. Yeah. So I really, you know, I, I appreciate you asking. It isn't something that is super comfortable for me to talk about. Right. And now I'm rambling and like a little shaky. No, thank you. Like thank you for talking about, about it. About I, I appreciate it. But yeah, chefs. I mean, come on, look at you. I, you, just have, you have a great great thing about you. So I, look, I can't wait to see like what comes next for you. What What do you want to do next? you want to do a show where you just sit, sit in a chair for a couple hours? Or? Yeah, like Drazzy Chaperon. Just, the draw, there you go. I was trying yeah. to think what would be the perfect that's, role. That's you already figured it out, man in, man in chair. chair. Yeah, I <laughs> uh, hadn't thought about that till either, but that's, that is perfect. I, no, I, I, uh, I actually, I mean, I would love to do like a play. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love musicals, and I yep. and I love music and singing. Um, I was really, I was much more focused on doing straight plays in in school. Yeah. And um, that's something that I would love to get the chance to do. I've done a number of off Broadway plays and mm -hmm. smaller things, but I would love to get a chance to do that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Tonys are coming up. Yeah. You excited? I. I'm excited. So you're going to have to do that thing of performing and being nominated and looking nice and doing the red carpet. You're going to have to balance a lot of things <sighs> yeah. in one night. So, and then I also am going to have to like be cool about the fact that I'm in the room that I've watched you know, every year yeah. for my entire life. Yeah. So like, that's going to be a lot of emotions, I think. Well, yeah, because like a year ago, right, like right now it's very easy for like me to say, look, well, I knew you'd be totally nominated. Of course you're going to the Tonys. But you, like, I'm sure in your life you're like, well, this all happened very fast. Yeah. So what's yeah. it like when you, you know you were a working actor and then now you're that guy? Now you're the guy everyone's going to be excited <laughs> for and watching on the Tonys and walking the red carpet and. Uh, I think like fortunately it's like really different and really the same. Like I, it feels mm -hmm. like totally totally wild and like I sort every time something new happens I'm like. That's oh I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> Like with the Tonys, right. like I, I, I think that was like one of my first thoughts when I was watching the nominations. Yeah, uh, was like, I'm gonna get to be there. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna get to like 
watch all yeah, these you get things. Tickets. I'm gonna get tickets. You get I, tickets. I get tickets now. <laughs> I can af- I can afford tickets. Um, because, so like that that it's it's like totally all these like little dreams uh-huh. and big dreams coming true at once. But at the same time, I'm at the theater every night mm-hmm. and I am performing with this group of people that are really down to earth and like really close knit mm-hmm. and. It's like the wrong way of saying it, but like they knock me down a peg. You know, anytime I like, if if I were to get like too lofty with any right. of these things, I come back to the theater and I'm like, oh right, we're doing the we're doing this thing, yeah. and it's this thing that we're like really proud of and love to do, yeah. and like that's the core of it. Mm-hmm. Like I have the best job in the world. I get to like exercise my my most favorite passion mm-hmm. on stage with people in the audience and right. with like this family. Uh, it's, um, and exercise on stage too. Oh, and actually exercise <laughs> and get real, and exercise physically. Yeah. <laughs> Actual cardio. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, it's like a CrossFit workout. Yeah, that's, I, I'm counting my blessings. Like, yeah. yeah, it's it's really special. So who are you taking to the Tonys? I'm taking my fiance. Nice. Did yeah. you figure out fashion? And is we're she st- nervous about fashion? We're still figuring it out. What does she, she do? She is a little. She's, she's not an actress. She, she's she, not an actress. Okay. No, she's in graduate school. Um, she's. You've known each other forever. We've known each other. Yeah, we've known each other since uh, high school. We actually met like a month before we started high school. Did you meet at camp or something? We That's did. Stu- we, yeah. met, we met at summer camp. Right. She didn't go to the summer camp. Okay. But um, but her brothers did. Okay. She was and just went to look for a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> She, that's not true. No, actually, the, the story is like is like t- a little too perfect. She like came to visit her brother, right, with her dad, and I didn't know them. I just you know, but her brother went to play basketball, and all the like all the guys were like playing basketball, yeah. and I was like, I can't play basketball. I'm I'm short and and bad, uh, and you know what? I'm just gonna give them a tour. Mm-hmm. So I gave these relative strangers a mm-hmm. tour of the campgrounds. Because um, you're just naturally that kind of guy, or because maybe you were like, "Who's she?" It's possible that there was a little bit maybe of "Who's yeah. she?" Okay. I was in like eighth grade, right? So yeah. it was like a little bit of both. I'm sure I didn't for talk. A wife to at that I think point. there probably was like a "Who's she?" But also like I'm still not going to talk to her, not even once. I'm just going to talk to her dad. <laughs> um, so uh, he and I had great conversations, and uh, <laughs> she and I made, you know, brief eye contact. Right. And then we started school together in September, and. It took two years for us to actually become friends, wow. but we've been friends ever since. Amazing. When are you going to get married, do you know? We're getting married s- sometime in the fall, hopefully. Fantastic. Yeah. What a big year yeah. for you. It's a big year. Awesome. It's an amazing year, and she's she's amazing. So she's the perfect person to be sitting next to at the Tony Awards. I know. I can't wait. I can't wait. We have no idea what we're wearing yet, awesome. but she's going to look amazing. Well, I can't wait to see you on TV. Oh, my. I'm I know. excited. I'm gonna scream when you come on the on the <laughs> camera. It's exciting. Take a screenshot because I'm, I'm gonna want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, thank you so much. I, thank it's you. been so great watching you all season, and I'm so happy that everything worked out correct with this show because I fell in love with this show in the very beginning, and this is uh, just a phenomenal debut. And I can't wait to thank see you, what's next. Thank you, and thank you for being such a support of the show. Cool, everyone, thank go you. see SpongeBob SquarePants. It's at the Palace Theater. You're yeah. not gonna forget it. It's like a one of a kind experience for real. And this guy is awesome. Oh, and he's going to be on the Tonys. I'm going to be on Woo! the Tonys. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.